Okay, just a quick warning, photo scanning is really addictive and you might end up ruining dinner with your girlfriend by going outside to take pictures of bagels. But that being said, here's how you do it. First step is to find a good subject. Shiny stuff confuses the software, so it's best to find something with a lot of detail and not much glossiness. Cloudy days work best because you don't have the harsh shadows from the sun baked into your object. Grab your camera of choice, I prefer a DSLR, but phones work too, just make sure you move really slow when you're taking your pictures. Orbit around the object, taking photos constantly. Take photos from low angles, medium angles, high angles. Just try and capture every little piece of the object. When you're changing angles, make sure to take pictures as you move. If you don't, the software might not understand where things are in relation to each other. Also, make sure whatever camera you use is not on automatic mode, because if your brightness changes from image to image, it'll confuse the software. So if your camera has a manual mode, go with that. One last thing, make sure there isn't any motion blur in your shots. You can do that by either turning up the shutter speed on your camera or just moving really slowly. Try not to fall on your face while you're doing this, and if someone walks by, make sure to feel as awkward as possible by looking like the worst photographer in the world. And if there are people around, wear your dang mask, come on. Once you got your pictures loaded up, throw them into a folder. Then load up your photogrammetry software. I prefer Reality Capture because it's really fast, but it's also $40 a month, which sucks. Meshroom is free though, so that's what we're going to be using. Once you got Meshroom open, go ahead and throw your pictures into the panel on the left. Save your project as something other than then hit start. After like a half hour or something, you should see something like this. Those white things are where you took the photos from, and those little dots are the common points that it found in each of the images. This is called a point cloud. Then you just gotta let it calculate for a long time. For me, it took like an hour or two. While you're waiting, feel free to check out my Patreon. I got a ton of stuff on there. We got 3D scans, we got cute characters, we got vehicles, we got lightning, we got plants, we got trash, we got me. I'm always adding stuff and it helps support the tutorials. Feel free to check it out, but no pressure. Thanks for the support. It'll process for a while longer. For me, it took like an hour or two. You'll know it's finished when the green bar has made its way to the end of the texture node. Go ahead and click Load Model, then turn off Visibility for your point cloud. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, but if it's not and you're getting some wonky results, go ahead and look through your pictures one by one and see if there are any that might be confusing the software. To bring your model into Blender, go up to File, Import, OBJ. Wherever you saved your project, it'll be under Meshroom Cache, Texturing, <laughs> Textured Mesh.OBJ. First thing I like to do is bring it to the center of the scene and rotate it so it's right side up. If we go into material view, you can see it's looking pretty good. But we got way too much data, Blender's chugging here. So let's go into the modifiers and add a decimate modifier. For the love of God, turn off display, because if you don't, you'll have to calculate this twice. Set the ratio to like 20% of the original vertices and hit apply. Next, we're gonna go into edit mode and cut this sucker out. Make sure you're in vertex mode and press K to open up the knife tool. Go ahead and make your way around the object, cutting it out. It can be pretty sloppy. Once you're back where you started, hit enter. Then go into the vertex data and add a vertex group. I'm going to call this edge. This is useful for quickly selecting the edge later. Hit assign. Then in vertex mode, go ahead and hide that edge. Then go into face selection mode and click on your object. Press control L to select everything attached to it. If you're selecting the ground too, you got some faces that are connecting it and you gotta delete those suckers. Once you deleted them, press control L again and hopefully it'll only select your object. Go back into vertex mode and press alt H to bring back in your edge. Then you can press Ctrl I to invert your selection and delete everything else in the scene. I find it helpful to have the bottom be completely flat, so we can go ahead and select our edge in the vertex groups, turn on proportional editing, and press SZ to scale it down on the Z axis. If you're stretching too much or too little, you can press page up and page down on your keyboard to adjust the ratio. In sculpt mode, you can use the smooth tool to smooth out any bumpy areas. If you smooth out an edge that should be crisp, you can use the crease tool to crease that baby up. It's still looking pretty bumpy though, so I'm going to right click on it and select Shade Smooth. If you're getting smooth edges that should be sharp, you can go into the Normals tab in the Vertex data and enable Auto Smooth. To give this thing a bit more detail, in the Shader Editor I like to plug the image directly into the normal input. Then add a bump map, switch it to Height, and dial it in. Bonus points if you throw a color ramp in there, and adjust it so that anything shiny is black and anything rough is white. Then you can go ahead and plug that into the Roughness input, and you got a makeshift roughness map. Plug the texture back into the color value and you are good to go, baby. Enjoy that 3D model. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and if you don't feel like doing all this work, you can head on over to my Patreon and download the models I made. I got a whole new batch I'm going to upload in a couple days. Thanks for your support, and see you next time. Have a good day.